Why is music in movies very important? I'll show you why. Let's look at this clip first. Now let's put three different types of music in the same clip. <laughs> My name is Joshua Van Hocken, and welcome to Talking Match. So in this video, I'll be talking about the nominees of the Academy Awards for Best Original Score. If you're ready to dance, hit the intro. The winners of the 93rd Academy Award will be announced in the 25th of April, 2021. In this lecture, I'll be presenting you the general information about the composer, the general information about the film, the aesthetics of the music composition of the nominated composers of the original score category. Let's begin! The Five Bloods is directed by Spike Lee. Spike Lee is well known for directing movies that have something to do with racism, specifically towards blacks. One of his well known films in that topic includes Do the Right Thing, Malcolm X, Black Klansman, and much, much more. This film, The Five Bloods, is a story about four African American veterans return to Vietnam to find the remains of his squad leader who died during the Vietnam War and the Gold. The composer of this film, Terence Blanchard, is a jazz musician. He performed a couple of other Spike Lee's films, including Do the Right Thing, and later on, he actually composed music for film. And his first film that he ever composed for was Jungle Fever. But of course, well notably, Malcolm X, and an Academy Award nominated for Black Clansman. Wow, I was expecting more jazz, but this is very different. The soundtrack of The Five Bloods have the feeling of John Williams' Second Private Ryan and the Thomas Newman's 1970. This music suits very well for that military music kind of an aspect. Very different to Apocalypse Now or even Schindler's List. It's so different to those kind of war films. It's more of that military, 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 military feel. And I think he did a pretty good job with that. It, it even has that sorrowness in that music. In it, it's performed that real live orchestral music. It's kind of like an orchestral suite or like a second movement, the slow sad movement in a symphony. This soundtrack itself has been performed and even conducted by Terence Blanchard and a live orchestra. Spike told them about the scene and how pivotal the scene was, and we played it back for them on the screen with the dialogue so they can hear it. And you could hear people reacting to what it was they were looking at. And then we went and did another take. And when we did the next take, you could feel their connection to the story. Why was it nominated? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, the music is very well interpreted and it's so relevant to the story. And also, oh, come on, he was already being nominated before. Rule number one of Fight Club. You do not talk about Fight Club. <laughs> why? Why? Why did I do that? I, that? That was not Brad Pitt. Yes, David Fincher is the director of this film, Man. David Fincher is the guy who made Fight Club, Gone Girl, Seven. Oh, I love that film. And of course, The Social Network. Trent and Atticus are the members of an industrial rock band named Nine Inch Nail, and they have been collaborating together for film scoring including Bird Box, The Girl in the Dragon Tattoo, Gone Girl, and they both won the best original score for another David Finch's movie, The Social Network. And the Oscar goes to Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, The Social Network. 
Is this really happening? Um... Now, this film, Mac, I must say, people must watch this film because it's such a great film. pretty good. It's a film about a real-life person named Herman J. Mankiewicz, who wrote the story of the most famous film in film history. Orson Welles' movie, Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane is historically one of the most important films of all time because, along with The Godfather, it is considered one of the best films of all time, and it still is the best film of all time. I should say you watch Citizen Kane before you watch Mank, because I am all about the originality. Now, back to Mank. How did the composer perform this work? Performers. Everybody record their part separately, then get that back, put them into a state where everybody's in time and everybody's in tune. And some of these were hundreds of tracks. This was their big challenge because of COVID-19. Every instrumentalist had to play their own pieces had to play with their own instruments in their own homes and record it and send it to Trent and Atticus for themselves to combine the audio and make the soundtrack for this film. I fully agree with these guys getting nominated for the Academy Award because the film has such an amazing nostalgic vibes of the early 1930s and the late 1940s. Even some mystical moments and very creative aspects of the soundtrack like the typewriter. Writer, but really suits to this music. It kind of reminds me of that. Of that. Oh, what's that movie? That, that Australian movie. I believe this film is very, very difficult film to compose an original score for. I mean, the film itself is too good that it might not even need music because there isn't any suitable style towards this film. I guess composing for a film for this type would be... would have been a nightmare. So I must say, Mustard did a fantastic job composing an original score for this film. This character of Jacob is obsessed with this farm and this is his dream. It represents a lot to him. It's sort of his... It's his career, it's his, it's his religion, it's his obsession, it's a drug for him. And I wanted the music to reflect that, the feeling of the music to reflect his sort of mystical power of the land, you know, what that means to him. Instead of writing the memorable themes, he just interpreted the character's emotions, the struggle, the passion, their obsession, even the positive aspects of this film. I can hear a little bit of that burnt tweeting thing in here. It's of course there is a film with no music. The most famous example is definitely Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Now the composer did that and I think the director wanted that too because he wanted to reveal that realism towards that film. And a couple of scenes, there was a bit of a moment where there was no music and that itself was so realistic that it was the best without any music in it. However, when it was scenes with music, it kind of has that furniture music thing in there. Furniture music or musique da blabla moi is a background music performed with live instruments that these pieces were composed in an unmemorable theme but only composed for cafes, art galleries to remember the mood and the atmosphere of that area. This furniture music was composed most of the time by Eric Sati and it's an example of minimalism, experimentalism and avant-garde. It definitely sounds very similar. I think Lee Isaac Chung did a fantastic job making this movie and Mazuri himself, he did a most challenging job writing music for this kind of a difficult film. You might know James Newton Howard from Pretty Woman, Walking Down the Street, or The Unbreakables, or The Fugitive, or Where's or The Hunger Games series. He's more notable composing films for M. Night Shyamalan films including The Sixth Sense, The Unbreakable, Signs, The Village, and much, much more. This film, News of the World, is a Western drama film directed by Paul Greengrass based on a novel by Paulette Giles. And it is about a veteran, a Civil War veteran, played by the legendary Tom Hanks! 
who found a girl being captured by the Indians. So Tom Hanks tries to save her and basically tries to give her back to her family who might have, well, some of her family members might have survived. I can see why he was nominated. First of all, he was nominated at the Oscars before! Fugitives of my best friend's wedding, the village, even he didn't win anything. Well, he, well, even if he didn't win anything, but still, he's been nominated, which is a very, very honorable thing for anyone in the film industry. Also, the use of this instrumentation and the originality of the style in this film. Very typical Howard to tune in here. Ooh. Hey. He enlightened that 1800s Western feel with the violin solo thingy, that nice fat bass, and of course a really nice tambourine. This did an amazing job in writing original score in a traditional style. Good old Pixar film. Soul, Trent and Atticus again have been nominated already for Mank and this time Soul. But it's Trent and Atticus plus one. John Baptiste, who is a jazz composer and one of the important composers of this film, Soul. So in this movie, it has three composers. Trent and Atticus and another one, John Baptiste. John Baptiste is also a jazz musician, band leader, and a television personality. He has collaborated with many great artists, including Stevie Wonder, Prince, Ed Sheridan, and much more. This film relates to life, death, before life, after life, and predominantly lots of jazz. Lots of jazz. So those parts are usually with the jazz music were, were composed by Baptiste. However, I'm assuming the scenes showing the souls in the Great Beyond and the Great Before scenes were composed by Trent and Atticus. Ooh. Man, yeah, this one's different already. Definitely this is Trent and Atticus. In my theory, these composers have been nominated for three reasons. One, contrast. Two, jazz. And three, it's a story about musicians. It's a story of music. Nearly every single Academy Award winning movie is either a musical or film about a musician and most of the time get nominated for Best Picture, Best Original Score, and Best Original Soundtrack. That includes Lion King, Frozen, Singing in the Rain, My Fair Lady, West Side Story, La La Land, Sound of Music, and much, 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 much more. And also, it's Trent and Atticus. What did you expect? Get me more subscribers and more views. So Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next lecture. My name is Joshua One Parkin, and as always, take